Welcome to what is the second in our series around sports management and international federations. In our first workshop, we had the privilege of talking to four of our emerging or newer federations, where we were able to see some of the barriers and find an insight into how they started the journey of developing their sport or our sport of gymnastics and the federation in their country. There are indeed a lot of commonalities, which focused on a lack of resources, such as technical expertise, administration, as well as equipment, and even awareness around gymnastics, because as we all know, it is not just about the Olympics. Today, we get to have a chat with four of our more established federations from around the world. We do know the demands on any international federation can be challenging, and they've become increasingly more intricate over the years. Federations have to not only be financially stable, strong, and have best practice good governance, but be underpinned by a robust strategic plan just to so we can survive in this ever-changing world. In gymnastics, it is challenging, we know. We have diverse stakeholders. We've got our government bodies, the boards, the clubs, the coaches, the athletes, the parents, and even our own staff. Each group has their own interests, requirements, and they make different management, they definitely make management complex. With gymnastics, we had the added um, difficulty or challenge with our different disciplines. We have, they're all at different maturities, varying stages, and they have their both unique nuances and cultural characteristics that as federations, we have to try and deal with day to day. These factors can keep us up at night. They add layering and working with people we have to remember at all times, we're working with people and people with passion. And today we have four people that are very passionate about the sport of gymnastics. And they're gonna give us a little insight into how it is that they work in their federations and how to make a more su sustainable federation. We've got Solvi from Iceland Gymnastics Federation. We've got Hanyu Sun from Korea Gymnastics. We've got Henrik Motto from Brazil and Donnie Jeggins from Gymnastics South of Africa. Welcome everybody to this uh, panel discussion. I'm so excited to see some of you old faces, not so old, but old friends that I've known for many, many years. And of course, some young friends. Today we have our four for our guest speakers, and they're going to do presentations on how they become sustainable as an organization, their journey that they've been on, and just give it an insight on how it is working in the International Federation. Hello, friends of gymnastics. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our federation, which was founded in 1968, which means that this year we were 55 years old. My name is Solve Jónsdóttir and I'm the CEO of uh, Icelandic Gymnastics and I've been in that role since 2015. Before that, I was the elite, elite manager for the federation and coming from a background as a former gymnast, a uh, coach and a judge, and I've also had the privilege of growing up in the sport, being in all sorts of committees. Um, I feel like every day is a privilege. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Icelandic gymnastics background, uh, what we think is key to sustainable sport, how we try to remain relevant to our members, and what we uh, do to emulate and why. So a little bit about the background. Um, gymnastics in Iceland is the third biggest sport and now has uh, almost 15,500 members in 30 clubs around the country. We are the biggest indoor sport and when we look at the numbers with all the indoor sports uh, active in Iceland, we can see that 36% of all people doing sports are doing gymnastics. We also think it's very important always to look at how the younger generation is doing and we can see that we are even a little bit bigger there. We're also the biggest female sport in the country. 
and uh, almost 50% of all girls that are doing sport in Iceland uh, when we look at the indoor sports are doing gymnastics and even more in the younger generation but when we look at uh, females doing sports in Iceland overall then one in every third female is doing gymnastics so we have huge numbers of participation which we are very proud of but when we look at the growth from 2004 uh, here is a graph that uh, has gymnastics blue handball orange basketball gray and athletics yellow we can see that in 2004 when our NOC started doing those numbers that we were very close to athletics and now in the recent years we have had a tremendous growth in our sport which we are very proud of. We relate the growth mostly to new venues and gymnastics halls being built around the country and we've, we take great pride in seeing those numbers because it tells us that we're doing something good. Uh, sustainability is a very uh, important topic to us, even though it's a difficult one. We've been working on an environmental policy, which is coming into effect now. We try very hard to keep ourselves up to date, which we think is the key to make sure that you understand everything re re regarding the topic and try to implement it in your work. Uh, events in gymnastics are not very sustainable, but we try what we can to reuse all the material that we, that we use. But in the end, we find that uh, human resources, keeping people in the sport, uh, making sure that the knowledge stays inside the sport, is a very fundamental thing when it comes to sustainability for us. So we've been working on events uh, with a focus on participation where the participants can have their own voice. We think it's very important that we listen to their voices. We want to be very inclusive in everything we do. And our main focus is that we make sure that everyone has a role and they feel like they belong to Icelandic gymnastics. Um, we think it's very, very important that we keep a good relationship with our members, so we listen to them. Every fall we start the season together with a big education day because we think that the education is key to everything. Um, maybe two or three times each season then we have what we call soup meetings where we take the hot potato at the moment and ask the clubs to bring uh, members that are related to that topic so we can sit together, look for solutions together and try to take something away from it to work even harder on until next time. Uh, everything we do, we evaluate. We do evaluation forms that we send to everyone during and after the event and we make sure that they can do it without putting their name to it because we feel like it's very important in a small community like Iceland is that they can make sure that their voice is heard even though they don't have to say who it's coming from. We do newsletters that we send out. We aim them for clubs, we aim them for parents and fans so we make sure that um, our focus points get through to everyone involved in, in Icelandic gymnastics. We emulate with the six uh, biggest sports in Iceland and we work very closely with them and we can feel that it's very important for our work to share knowledge with sports that are working in the same environment as we are here in Iceland. We also work very closely with the Nordic countries which is a very important uh, knowledge sharing um, relationship with, that we have with them. And we also have this knowledge sharing relationship with many like-minded federation in Europe. Um, we, we think it's very important that we constantly share good thoughts, good practices, because you learn a lot from it 
and you can also save a lot of time because you don't have to invent the bicycle all the time and you also learn a lot from telling other people about what you have been doing so we think it's a very very big asset working closely with other people in sports so I'm going to end it with our three main goals. We think it's very important that everyone feel like they belong. And at the end of the day, it's all about what kind of a society do we want to create and what can we contribute to make the society even better. And we think through sports it is. And let's all remember that gymnastics is for all. Thank you and bye. Good evening. Today, I want to have presentation, the way for the sustainable development. The table of contents will be in four parts, from intro to discussion. In intro, there are three parts. I'm An Song Hoon, the Deputy Manager of Korea Gymnastics Association. I'm working for international relationships and national team management. KGA is founded in 1945, affiliated with FIG in 1959, AGU in 1965. In 1988, both MAC and WAC team qualified and participated Olympics for the first time. And now we are holding international events and competitions. We have several teams in 16 provinces from elementary school to high school, 8 teams in university, and 13 max team and 9 wax team in professional teams. An affiliated club is still increasing with effort of our federation member, operating KGM Star program to make people more friendly to gymnastics, supporting by Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. I think the main key is good relationship between our concern. First, we need support of our main sponsor, POSCO ENC. They support us since 1985. With their support, we can operate national team and national and international competition. They support us in many ways, such as financial and organizing their own team. Next. Except for 2016 Olympic Games, since 1988 Olympics, men's team Korea always won the medal from Olympic Games. We make goal for every year and Olympic cycle. Following FIG, AGU, and Korea Sports and Olympic Committee, we update our system in many ways. Especially we update our governance system when KSOC update their system. Technical Committee, Athletes Committee, School PE committee and various committee is now in action to spread fair and safe gymnastics environment in Korea. Additionally, with effort to bond with each concern, we reached the goal to make MAG and WAG medalists in 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Especially thanks to our sponsor, they doubled the in incentives for the medalists with this historical record. Of course, there are many people who support gymnasts in KGA. We are holding a regular meeting with executive director of local gymnastics association at least twice a year during the national competition. It is necessary to keep good relationship with local communication and national association to help each other. What is difficult and what is need to operate association so we can give them a message that we support them and they can also support us with this action. We have constructive discussion in this regular meeting. Also, we have an incentive to local association. When they newly organize gymnastics team club, we provide them an amount to support initial setup of team or club. Also, we have additional incentive distributed by ratio when local association registering gymnast at the start of the year. And we have middle and high school gymnastics association and professional gymnastics association under Korea Gymnastics Association. KGA supports to operate competition 
provides judge and financial support. I think Korea Gymnastics Association is pretty good and well-organized federation in Korea. Since our main sponsor, POSCO ENC, is supporting us since 1985. As I mentioned previous, they support us in many ways, from financial to organizing their own team. The KGA is applying the POSCO ENC administrative guideline. For example, the core value of POSCO ENC is safety management, which means they are prioritizing safety as the highest value. And each with safety value, they are pursuing challenges and innovations beyond the limit. KGA also take this management value to challenge and safeguarding, to innovate ourselves. Our main slogan is gymnastics is the basics of all sports. We'll do our best to make safe and innovative gymnastics environment, combining safety management and our slogan to challenge the limit. Thank you for listening to my presentation. This is the end of my presentation. And many thanks to FIG, give me this chance, and to Dr. Han. Thank you. Hi, my name is Enrique Mota, and I have the honor of holding the position of Sport Director at the Brazilian Gymnastics Federation. Our federation has a rich story dating back to 1978, when it was founded with the aim of promoting and straightening gymnastics in Brazil. Over the decades, the CBG has truly dedicated itself to this mission, achieving remarkable glories to Brazilian gymnastics. With the first Olympic gold, silver and bronze medal in different Olympic Games. Nowadays, our federation has 360 registered clubs and actively involves more than 25 states federation with a community of over 5,000 practicing athletes. We strongly believe in the importance of establishing clear rules and functions for all Brazilian gymnastics teamwork. This commitment to organization and efficiency has been essential for the ongoing development of the gymnastics in our country. One of the most important initiatives of Brazilian Gymnastics Federation is the creation of the Sport Development Center spanning from the basics to the high performance level. These centers are spread across the, across the country, making gymnastics more accessible and promoting, promoting the potential of our at talent athletes. The results of these efforts are evident on various map demonstration how, going, how Brazilian gymnastics works to make our sport bigger and bigger every day. Investing in the communication on from digital media is of paramount importance to promote Brazilian gymnastics efficiently. However, we are always looking for broadcasts on TV channels, newspaper, and magazines to reach a diverse audience. To have an integrity communication, we have coordinated efforts across various media, various media channels. And in addition, we promote previews of gymnastics events on social media, broadcast competitions, live on TVs, and promoting exclusive interviews online that can create more comprehensive our experience for the views in sport. We take pride in drawing inspiration for other successful sports federation in Brazil and of course soccer, volleyball, judo and other famous sport here. This organization has achieved uh, outstanding sport results in our country and they understand the nuances and challenges of, of sports and, and the landscape. So of course we inspire in them. The Brazilian Gymnastics Federation is committed to continuing to promote in the gymnastics and encourage the development of our countries and friends' talents by, by our side. We believe that 
by establishing robust structures like the development centers and learning by the from the success of other sports federation, we can reach even greater, highest, and contribute to the radiance of sport in Brazil. So thank you very much. And if you have any doubts, we can continue discussing in our seminar. Hi, my name is Donny Jurgens. I'm the president of Gymnastics South Africa. I'm very pleased to be part of this seminar series for the FIG. So let me tell you a little bit about Gymnastics South Africa. Well, the South African Gymnastics Union was formed in 1931 and it affiliated to the FIG in 1947. For a long while, the organization was excluded from international participation from 1996 due to the apartheid policies of the country. In 1994, with the advent of democracy in South Africa, it became the South African Gymnastics Federation. In the recent years, it underwent a rebranding exercise and now it is trading as Gymnastics South Africa. Our footprint in South Africa, we have about 19,000 members, about 350 clubs and 455 schools. The 19,000 members are registered members. It doesn't include school learners because the schools register as individual schools. We offer all the FIG disciplines and we've also added rope skipping. So our disciplines are women and men's artistic gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, aerobic gymnastics, acrobatic gymnastics, trampoline and tumbling, and rope skipping, as well as parkour and gymnastics for all. Now let me focus on the key topic of this webinar series. The key to a sustainable federation, in my opinion, are the following. Firstly, financial stability. Goes without saying that a strong resource base is the key to success. And the organization simply has to have a financial stability plan in place. Secondly, good governance good constitution, good executive committee, good policies, all contribute towards good governance. Thirdly, a strategic plan. Bring together key stakeholders and talk about where you see your federation in the future. What is your vision? How are you going to get to your vision? What are the key objectives of your federation? The next Key success factor is good partnerships and good relationships. Good partnerships with your government, good relationships with other federations, with your continental federation, and of course, with the FIG. The next key success factor is good people, good leadership. Identify potential leadership. Make sure you train people. Make sure you have succession planning in place. Without good people, the Federation will not be successful. Effective communication. I can go on and on about this aspect, but poor communication has led to the downfall of many organizations. Effective communication amongst the board, with stakeholders, amongst members. I cannot stress the importance of effective communication enough. Education and training. This is a key feature of what we do in Gymnastics South Africa. Educating judges, coaches, administrators, education on programs. So education and training as a focus is very important. In South Africa, the clubs form the basis of the sport. Many of the clubs are privately owned and other clubs function as community organizations. 
But strong clubs with strong leaders and strong programs is the bedrock of your federation. And then, of course, the federation needs programs, a wide variety of programs. Besides the nine disciplines, programs for seniors, for adults, for people with a disability, programs in the early learning sector, a wide variety of inclusive programs is central. And then finally, good visibility. In other words, the Federation needs a marketing strategy. A marketing strategy doesn't have to break the budget. Nowadays, there are so many free forms available to market your organization and make people more aware. How do we remain relevant to our members? Well, we need to provide services and support to our members. These will include training, access to programs, access to safeguarding policies and implementation practices. And a huge part of what we do is organize events, our national games, zonal games, provincial games, etc. So our members need to have a variety of events to participate in. We also remain relevant by representing our members. Representation at the national level, keeping an eye on policies and legislation, and advocating for the rights of our members. We must also remain relevant at the broader level, not only to our members. We must remain relevant in our country and society as a whole. We are competing for resources with other federations, with other needs in the country. So we need to make a case for gymnastics. What is unique about gymnastics? How can we address national and global challenges such as poverty, health and education? Is that our business? I would argue, yes, it is, if we want to remain relevant. What sports do we look to emulate? Well, gymnastics is unique, in my opinion. In South Africa, we are not looking to emulate any other sports. We are not comparing ourselves to other sports, and we are not trying to copy others. In fact, we work with others for the common good of sport in South Africa. We do, however, support the notion that gymnastics can be the biggest sport in the world, bigger than football. This is something the FIG president often says. Why? Because unlike many other sports, gymnastics literally has something for everybody. Well, that's the end of my little talk. Thank you. And all the best in growing and sustaining gymnastics in your country. But it's going to be a, a bit of a fun session today. And the first question I want to open up to anyone is when we discussed emerging with our emerging co countries, the barriers, the most common theme was a lack of coaches, quality and, and quantity. What I'd like to know is how are you as federations developing homegrown coaches? And is there still a need to continually import technical expertise into your country? I can start talking uh, about uh, this question. I am en Enrique, uh, sport director at Brazilian Gymnastics Federation. And for me, it's an honor to be here too, to express a little bit about the, the Brazilian uh, gymnastics story and what we do nowadays uh, to still develop in the gymnastics and at the same time, trying to help our friends, countries, especially in South America. So, uh, talking specific about the coaches and the develop of the coaches, this is one of the points that we always trying to think in about it because we are always thinking in results, yeah, in the high level system uh, and in the medals, and sometimes we don't stop to thinking about education and to promote our coaches. So. Since 2018, we started uh, using the system of uh, developing classes with these coaches, especially using the social medias and trying to always do open sessions for everybody. 
and especially after the pandemic, uh, this increased a lot using the system of uh, internet because in Brazil we have a, a, a really huge country, yeah, with uh, with high costs of travel tickets. So we are always trying to use the system of internet to to having less costs about. Uh, the developing classes and the programs specific for the for the coaches. <clears throat> Hello, friends. Uh, for us here in Iceland, then this is uh, of course uh, a challenge all the time, because uh, a good coach is very hard to find when we look at it from very many perspectives. Because winning medals isn't always the best coach that you need for your system. So when you look at it from very many point of views, then you need someone that uh, is going to grow with your organization, that's going to come uh, as a leader into your system and is having a passion and heart for people, children, and is going to lead your system in that way. So back in 2016, we started making... Uh, more effort into education is key to everything. So we linked our licensing system and the, the coaches education system together. And that is linked to the level of uh, gymnastics that you're coaching. Now we have moved more to the internet with the lectures, but practical is still done uh, in, in the gyms. At the end of the day, when you have sat down with your system and you have uh, defined what a good coach is, then I think we all realize that sometimes less is more. So it's better to do it well and be patient. And when people feel good in your system, they are going to grow older in your system and start uh, coaching as their role model did. So we need to make sure that that is done in a human and very uh, positive way. What are we positive strengthening in our system? If I can follow up from from Solvi and and from my perspective, um, good people and good leaders, good administrators for me is is a priority. And if you have good people, you can make good people good coaches. And if you have solid structures, solid clubs in place, then for me that is quite a priority. But if if I focus quickly on on um, what we are doing, so we we've, we've managed to. With limited resources, so we've appointed a manager uh, in our office, one of three managers, and uh, education and training falls under her portfolio. So that is one. We've got a coordination um, function in place, which which helps a lot. And then, of course, we have, for each of our disciplines, we have a technical committee, um, a technical management committee, as we call that. And each of those committees also takes responsibility. But that, that is a luxury because we uh, we are relatively established. So for a smaller nation, that may not be that practical. So in that case, a few good leaders and forming good partnerships with other educational institutions can also help to empower your coaches and build the capacity of your coaches. So collaboration and partnership uh, in the absence of, of having lots of resources. Thank you. Dottie, I couldn't agree more um, around what you said. It really resonates with me and collaborating with other organisations is key. In, in particular, we're all struck with resources. I don't think any country would say they're rich with enough resources. So I think you had some great points. Solvi, I know in your presentation you touched on things around um, developing some strategies to make sure you keep the sports knowledge in your federation. And that's more not just around coaches, but um, your administrators. Could you share a little bit more about what you're doing to ensure that you don't have that leaky sieve of expertise knowledge leaving your federation? When it comes to the, the office and the administration, um, then... We have grown very much for the last few years and it started with few people with passion and what you what tends to happen is that you overwork these people and then 
if many leave at the same time, then you risk uh, losing a lot of knowledge, which is a horrible thing after all the hard work that has been done. So now we have made this phrase, happy at the office, happy at home, happy normal life. <laughs> um, so that has been very, very um, like the silver lining and everything we do, we try to make sure that everybody has days to breathe and be a person that is not at work. Um, when it comes to the knowledge in, on the floor and in the organization, then we, we talk a lot about that everyone should have a place where they belong. It's a very important feeling for all, all of us as humans. So if you feel like you belong, then you start feeling good. And when you feel good, then you're more likely to spread positive energy around. And then you're more likely to uh, grow up in the sport. And when you're doing gymnastics, I think this is what we all agree on. We, we give good foundation, not only for the body, but we give good foundation for, for being a good human being, being a better person. You learn so much about yourself, your challenges, your goal setting, and you become a good citizen in the society. And to be a part of that is, of course, a privilege for us all. But as soon as we lay the ground for them to feel good about themselves, they gain self-confidence and they uh, belong within our sport, then why, of course, they're going to grow old with us. And then that's what we mean is that gymnastics is for all at all part in your life. And that's what is, in my opinion, the most beautiful part about the sport. Thanks, Solvi. So much of that. We're all sitting here shaking our heads, agreeing with you, in particular about the burnout, because you get good people and the burnout. So I think um, that's something, even as bigger federations, it happens, um, the burnout and, there's, you know, the passion can get you so far, but um, sometimes that passion starts to dwindle. I'm going to digress a little bit now. We've talked, um, I, I looked at the, the presentations and I sort of come out with the three, the three C's. We talked about capability just before. So we've talked about the coaches and the administrators. There's something else that I want to talk about, which is about the connection or communication and then the collaboration. So I'm going to switch to the communication because I know, Donnie, you put a lot of work into your communication um, that you talked about in your communication. So what I'd like to ask for you, is, like it really resonated with me that you said clubs were the ecosystem. They're the backbone of um, everything we do. So I want to know, how do you approach the development and communication with the clubs to ensure they stay with you, aligned with you, but also so they can all make sure they put all those policies and all the boring things that we do in our office, they actually bring them to life. How do you go about doing that, Donny? Yeah, that's very tough to summarise in 45 seconds to a minute. We, uh, we can and maybe should do an entire seminar uh, just on on clubs and and that it's not an easy it's not an easy issue because in south africa on the one hand you have clubs that operate as business entities so as a business entity they have an objective to generate income and make money out of gymnastics there's nothing wrong with it so one of the challenges i i often face is that i don't know whether our clubs all buy into the same national strategy or passion around empowerment, around growth, around values, uh, etc. So essentially the clubs belong to a district federation or belongs to provincial federation. So that for me is a bit of a, an obstacle that we need to address. Um, but having said that, we do have a, a participation manager. Again, we, we're fortunate to have some human resource and her responsibility is club support. So we do have an initiative, as an example, called Club Connect, where we have education sessions for clubs and they are at liberty to attend. And during COVID, this was particularly popular because clubs needed some advice on how to survive COVID. But outside of COVID periods, uh, we're lucky if we get 20, 25 people attending this. And as I indicated, we've got about 400 clubs. 
So this, this is a challenge, but at the same time, I'm very firm in my belief that we need strong clubs. And one of the things I, I like to focus on is trying to convert schools clubs. And I know we're going to speak about schools later into community clubs that's open for parents, that's open to any person in the community to come and join. Let me stop there, otherwise I can go on forever. Donny, I think we should, um, we could spend days together, definitely, and we will touch on the schools um, in a moment. But you talked about you've got resources to have, you know, two key staff re um, that you've already shared with us. But to have that staff, sometimes you need to have government support or a lot of the time. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Han, Dr. Han. You've mentioned that to have a sustainable federation, we need to engage with all stakeholders. But we know one of our key stakeholders is the government in all of our countries and to help us develop, be sustainable. How do you go about making sure your relationship with the government is strong, robust, and you can keep getting the funding and maybe even increasing the funding? Yeah, we have a very good uh, funding from the government and also main sponsor, Costco ENC, is a big support. So what uh, should we get a, a big fund from the government? I'd like to uh, share the three points. So first of all, is that we have the good result in the Olympic Games and Asian Games. So since uh, 1980, Seoul Olympic Games, so men's team, we uh, won the Olympic medals without the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. We all the, win the medal. And then 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, women's gymnastics team won, won the bronze medal. This is the first time to get the Olympic medal. And also women's team, they have qualified the uh, uh, Olympic Games since 1980 Seoul Olympic Games. It's very long to more than 30 years. So anyway, we have the good results. So this is the good so financial support from the government and then main sponsor. And then second uh, point, so uh, our slogan is the gymnastic is the base all of sports. So we could communicate with the Korea Olympic Committee, KOC. So gymnastic is the basic sports. So we emphasize then KOC, so big support, basic sports, track and field, swimming, and gymnastics. They recognized this is the gymnastics basic sports. So, so that's why we big support. Uh, it's like a K Gym Star program. It's supporting by the Ministry of the Culture and Sports and Tourism with 16 province in Korea. So all uh, province, we're running the, this K Gym Star program, supporting big support. So to not only to elite program, just uh, for fun, just to open to anybody to interested in gymnastics. Then this is uh, one of the big, uh, success and good communicate uh, with the uh, Korean Olympic Committee and government. Han, I think we all agree that we are the foundation sport. And I think the key message that you've just delivered there is any, any of our federations going to the government looking for funding, that's a big tagline to say we can actually get medals and help you in any of your sports, because we're the foundation. Um, I want to pose a question to Henrique, because you talked about 
how big your country is and it is as big as where i it's bigger than even where i come from australia try to connect to everybody communicate you have quite a um, detailed digitalization strategy that you've put in place um how did you go about streamlining it making it sure it was efficient and have you got any advice to some of our other federations who have limited resources on how they could implement some of your digitalization strategies? So uh, for Brazilian gymnastics, we understand that it's really important to know about our country. Yeah, especially like we said before, it's a really, it's a really big country with really different regions, you know. So we are always trying to get numbers, uh, trying to understand how is the gymnastics in this region, how we use uh, some specific strategy to develop this specific modality of gymnastics. If some kind of uh, clubs and states are more developing some gymnasts and the other ones and try to understand why this happens, and for sure, using the technology and especially the social medias and the other platforms that you can use to communicate with or your athletes and or your officials, not just coach, but all the, all the family that works with gymnastics. It's one of the most important points of Brazilian gymnastics nowadays. Um, we use the WhatsApp communication. We use the, um, the easiest ways to go directly at the persons that you want to send your message. And with this, trying to inspire, inspire other persons to do gymnastics, to love gymnastics with a positive culture and always trying to bring... Um, information, news, uh, discussions about the technical uh, regulations and always having some important points and trying to promote the Brazilian participations in the competition and all this atmosphere using the technology and using the platforms and the social medias that you have nowadays. Uh, for sure, it's uh, one of the strongest point to develop our sports in Brazil because uh, in Brazil is not just gymnastics that it's a it's a big sport nowadays we have other other big sports so it's important to be at this on the same page of this this biggest sports of Brazil like soccer and 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 volleyball and gymnastics are, are trying to do this um, and as we said, the the technology, the technology, and the, for this education, the technology for training, the technology for the promote the promotion of gymnastics. So for a, a whole uh, points of thinking about the, a better sport for sure in two thousand twenty three, we need to use all these all these points that we can help to help us, Henrik. Um, you talked about, you know, your big country and digitalization, but then we go to Iceland and I love the fact that they have soup meetings and the hot potato. We call it in Singapore, it might be a cultural thing. We call it the coffee catch up. Um, Solvi, sometimes those face to face catch ups can really be significant. Can you just give us a little bit more information on how that's really uh elevated your communication strategies and assisted the organization in some of their uh, strategic priorities? Obviously, we are 370,000 people, but our country is quite big, but it makes it a little easier since we are so few. So, but at the end of the day, then we, you know, it doesn't really matter how many you are if you have good communication. And um, we found out that we were trying so hard to be transparent and we were so hardworking when it came to like giving out information, the same information to everyone at the same time, but we still found that it didn't reach the destination. So instead of being a little frustrated why it didn't go there, we decided to look closer in the mirror and try to find the way 
to make sure it would. So we decided to do soup meetings. So then we order soup and we contact the clubs and we just ask for the people we were trying to connect, uh, contact, contact. And we found out that this was a, a wonderful way to communicate with the people that we wanted to communicate with instead of going and have someone in between. So it made the work a lot better because also at the same time, you know, when you feel like you're a part of the decision, because that's what happened. We, we came to a mutual decision and we decided how we are going to go forward. Then it was, um, then we became one team. And when you have a go team atmosphere, then it is easier. Of course, I'm not saying that we don't have challenges. Of course we do. And we have the same challenges as everywhere because there are different opinions. But to see that as a positive thing, because we need to look at it from many sides before we reach a, a decision that is going to affect most of the people, then we can do it together. So soup meetings is something that we love. And we try to do like two to three per semester, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on how many hot potatoes we have. And uh, this actually came through COVID because then we were doing those meetings online. So we can also, even though most of the, our clubs and most of the uh, activity is here in the capital area, then we also have it online so people can listen in if they have, if they're far away, far, far away from us. Thank you, Solvi. I, I know that during COVID we did our coffee catch-ups virtually and we were actually trying to send some coffee through to the people that were online. So I think um, while there, it's a smaller country, particularly Singapore, it's a little easier compared to everyone else, but there are that intimate thing, discussing your problems with, with the community can certainly build that community spirit. Dr. Han, I was really interested to hear about um, how you have brought in some incentive programs for your clubs so that they actually register their gymnasts with you. Um, could you elaborate more on that? Because I think a lot of us would like to uh, get more members on our databases because that also helps with our funding, of course. But it'd be great to hear more about the incentive program that you put together that really increases your membership. So in Korea, the, we have the school system but we have the from the uh, middle school to high school is uh, more than uh, 250 teams. And especially it's a very uh, uh, professional team in Korea. This is a very special program in Korea. So professional teams, men's, men's team is the nine professional team and the women's team, a certain uh, professional team, they get salary and then good uh, benefit, good, uh, uh, very good uh, salary. Yeah. And then their uh, professional team. And we have, uh, now we are trying to actually start to get the membership fee before we don't have the membership fee from the teams or school and club. But a few years ago, we starting to get the membership fee from the school and then from the club and then there. Then we can get the membership fee. Then we give it back to the, the team, half 50%. Uh, to they organize the club and teams. So we big support each other. So we are trying to KGA, trying to more open the gymnastics uh, private club and big support. So uh, register the prof professional team and then uh, local gymnastics association teams. We are tr trying to big support for them. 
That, thank you, Han. I think um, that would definitely be another, another topic, membership, because I think most of our organisations, our federations, have pressure on us to develop more membership, to divest our revenue, in particular from the government, and membership, unpacking that value proposition certainly would be an amazing topic because I think we all have some learnings and we could really um, cross-pollinate and come up with some amazing solutions together. But you did touch on schools and I want to go back to Donny because the stats on your school community is astounding and you started to talk about how you're converting schools into clubs, into members. Could you just expand more? Because I think when we want to grow our membership, that is somewhere that we can really lead towards. I th I think it's it's not as rosy as it sounds. You said it's astounding. We've got about 25,000 schools in our country. And at the moment, uh, we're only in about 400 schools. So it sounds like a lot. But if you look at the total schools population, it's not that great. And it's something that needs a lot of work. So obviously a school has an infrastructure. There's a, a principal, there's staff, there's a building, there's a fence. So it's a good starting point. There's access to parents, access to members, all sorts of things. So it makes a lot of sense for us to focus on, on schools as a, as a center for development. In terms of results, and I, and I really want to come back to what Solvi said, and I, I, I find this profound and something that needs to be elevated, this conversation needs to be elevated. And that's the same question we're asking in the school setup. And remember now that in South Africa, most of these schools are in poor rural communities. So can we deliver gymnastics championship champions in these schools? Or can we deliver champions through gymnastics? Now, that is not the same thing. I cannot promise my government medals in gymnastics coming out of the schools. It's not possible. But I could promise that every child will be developed into a good citizen, somebody with manners, with values, with respect, with discipline, using gymnastics as a tool. Now, that is a different conversation. And, and I think a lot of what we do and even some of what we are saying here, we equate success with medals. We celebrated, we wanted to march in the streets when our girls progressed from 23rd to 19th in the world. And that's probably the best we're going to achieve in a while. So that, that conversation of whether we are getting better kids in schools through gymnastics or whether we are trying to produce gymnastics championships is a very, very important conversation. If I have 20 girls in a rotation, level seven, women's artistic gymnastics, out of the 20, Three will win medals, gold, silver, and bronze. But every one of those 20, I can make good, good, good girls, good women, good values, using gymnastics as a tool. And so that was absolute music to my ears. And that really, that conversation needs to be elevated. Donnie, I think you and I, it was music to my heart. Um, it makes my heart sing because I know that in a lot of the countries too, medals isn't something that we talk about. It's foundational sport. It is about good human beings. And um, I think if we can get that message across to everybody that it's about better people, our sport can really, really grow. Solvi, I think we're going to go back to you again because you talk about gymnastics for all as being that is the key for your sustainability. You have touched on it a couple of times now, but how would you suggest, we're starting out, it's a new country, how do you suggest some countries could further develop the gymnastics for all culture that Donnie and I are saying resonates as well? Um, how would they go about developing that culture? Because in some countries, that is really, really difficult because the government asks for medals, the parents ask for medals. Um, how do we grow gymnastics for all and make it... Um, bigger and make our sport even um, more influential? Uh, it's a big question and I'm going to do my best. From the research that I've read, then approximately 2% go elite. So that's a very interesting percentage because that means that 98% don't. And what are we doing for those 98%? 
approximately half of them loves to compete and they should and they should be able to do what they love but the other they want to belong they want to do what they like and that is not competing but they still like gymnastics they like the challenge they like the foundation it gives them and if we look at it as human beings it's very healthy for them to be there and we shouldn't push them to compete if they don't like it that is not necessary so for my conversation with my government i always talk about the public health because we are tapping into making Iceland healthier in the future. And that is very important for us all because it's going to give um, people that are going to need less assistance, both mentally and physically, if you have a good basics. And when you teach children that m training and moving two to three times per week and they feel good about it, then they're more likely to do it throughout their lives. So public health is my thing when I talk to our government. Uh, I agree that in some governments there is a lot of push for medals. And of course they are nice and they're beautiful and the best gymnasts in the world. Oh my God, they are amazing. Um, parents sometimes push for it. And for me, I think that is parents' education that we need to do more of. I think that is the group that we have been lacking at least here in my world a little bit when it comes to education. We need to tell them more about what our goals are and what we stand for. And um, when you think about it from a club's perspective, then if you're running a club and you're doing gymnastics for all, then those groups are very, very um, easily established inside their club. And they are they they pay fee to be there and to have fun joy and they 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 uh, do you say contains happiness inside the environment so i would go for doing one step at a time make it a success successful step and allow everyone to feel the joy that comes out of it don't start with making a huge plan just take it you know, it, it only takes one person to believe in it, one step at a time, because the joy is going to, smile brings a smile, and public health. Solvi, um, I think anyone listening will have taken some tips out of that about the um, talking to the government, and also it is, a, it's, it's, I feel it's our legacy that we can leave. When, um, when we finish in the sport, you know, healthy human beings. Um, but it's difficult and it's hard sometimes to do it when you're on your own. And I loved how Henry touched on the fact that he has some powerhouse sports in Brazil. We all know um, soccer, volleyball, and they've, the, the Federation have been able to tap into some of um, what they do because they also have a lot of funding, don't they? Much more funding than we any of us will ever see. Henry, can you just touch on some of the things that you've learned from some of those powerhouse sports, you know, and how are you going to continue to cross communicate? Because I think some of our other federations could really look at doing this to help support them. Uh, yes. Uh, investing in uh, trying to make a, a, a gymnast a powerhouse sport in Brazil it's one of our goals and we are for sure doing uh, this with some uh, I think important points that we can present about our world yeah uh, gymnastics is for sure a sport that has a lot of uh, relationships friendship um, accessibility um, we we have a, a lot of responsibility in our training days in our system and trying to present these skills for the community and at the same time showing that we are a, a really nice sport for the audience so mixing these ideas 
we are trying to present a gymnast that our country is loving and at the same time liking the persons and the stars that are doing gymnastics um, with big champions, just not on the floor, but at the same time for all the society. And with all these points, we are always working to promote uh, a nice uh, competition for the TV and for the, the social medias. And with this uh, investment, we broadcast all the Brazilian national championships. Doesn't matter if it starts on the pre juniors or if it's the elite level. We are always broadcast for all the families and for all the fans of the Brazilian gymnastics can see the competitions um, online on the on the streaming and the nationals and the big international competition normally goes to broadcast on the Brazilian TV channels. So using this uh, old but old but gold tips of other sports and the stories that they they live in, in Brazil, uh, we are building our story too, but for sure with this important points that gymnastics can really uh, prove this to the society, you know, uh, the friendship, the relationship that the athletes build on the competition, the coaches, for sure, this is a, it's one of our strongest points and we need to, to show this to the world. Henrik, I think you just summed up gymnastics for all the five Fs, you know, fun, friendship, fundamentals, uh, fitness, and forever. So they're the ones that we um that resonate. And I think we do have a story. Gymnastics does have a very strong story that we need to shout. And I think if we start shouting that to our governments, it, it's a different story. And then some of the pressures that some of the federations do have around funding won't be around um, compromising. But I'm going to digress because I could talk to you guys all day. But just one thing I want to know, what at the present time is your primary challenge that you're currently confronting in your federation? Just in a single sentence. It's about passion and people. I think that's what I started with. And I think that's what makes the world go round. Um Dr. Hahn, what are you what challenges are you facing in Korea? Just in one sentence. Oh, uh, in Korea, so many parents and many people, gymnastics is uh, recognized as a difficult and hard sport. So so this is the that's why the gymnastics population is decreasing now. They are thinking, oh, gymnastics is very difficult, very hard, very dangerous sports. So our federation, so how to make a popular sports and how to safety and uh, fun sports. So gymnastics is the safety sports and fun sports. So this is, the, I think, it's very important. So we are trying to do some uh, uh, change their mind. Gymnastic is a basic sport. Gymnastic is a movement for health and happiness. So this is very important, I think. I think very strongly the gymnastics for all theme is coming through this um, whole conversation. Solvio, Henry, what are the... What is one of your biggest challenges right now in the Federation? Uh, for Brazil, for sure, the biggest and the greatest goal is to make gymnastics accessible for everybody that wants to do gymnastics. For This is a, a really, really big challenge in a third world country that has a lot of difficulties. Uh, not just about sport, but social and uh, developing problems. And so making the gymnastics accessible uh, and understanding 
uh, what uh, modality of gymnastics because sometimes we cannot put the apparatus that you want in the place that you want, but you can do gymnastics. You can do gymnastics for all. You can do school gymnastics. We can do uh, gymnastics as an activity. So for us, make gymnastics accessible for everybody in our country. Our biggest challenge here is that all our clubs are completely full. So we need more space for all the gymnasts that we would so very much like to bring in. And uh, we need to educate more coaches so we can continue uh, tapping into our public health uh, goals to make better citizens for all, all of us around the world. Thank you, everybody. I think we're all on the same page. And what I've heard is, We've actually got the same problems as at some of the emerging countries, the awareness of what gymnastics is and the beauty of the sport, but also the benefits of the sport and coaches and making sure we have enough of the expertise to grow our sport. I've got to wrap it up, but I've got one thing. As a leader, short answer for all of you. We'll start with Dr. Hahn. Um, as a leader, what... One piece of advice would you give to other federations or other leaders in the gymnastics on how to get our sport to be the number one in the world? In my opinion, so in Korean coach, uh, actually we have the good results in the world, men's and women's gymnastics. So I'd like to give uh, some comments so we are some Korean coaching style. What is the Korean coaching style? We focus on the basics. We spend a lot of time for basics uh, training. So in, in the future, so they can get the good, uh, they, they can learn the uh, progressional skills. So I'd like to comment. So spend uh, more time basics and then physical preparation and progressional uh, methods, training methods. Then finally, you can get uh, a good result. And also coaches should uh, study based on the sports science, so biomechanics and the physiology, this is very, very important. So most coaches just uh, uh, study so sports science to teach, to teach and coaches gymnastics skills. Over to you, Solvi. We've just heard about good foundations, and I think that can apply to an organization having really strong foundations, step-by-step. Step. I think you said that just before, step-by-step, step. good foundations, and using data and science to make us better. Solvi, what can you share with us? One tip for other federations or even leaders on this journey. For the leaders of the future, I would say lead with your heart, because then you can't go wrong. As a leader and a tip for, for others, for me, it's about people management. I have absolutely no technical expertise in gymnastics whatsoever. Um, so it's really trying, I know it's easier said than done, trying to find a good team of people and then managing that people to bring out the best in them. And then the second one is to spend some time on, on planning, developing a vision, developing a mission, and trying to get people to buy into that and work towards the same objectives. So as a leader, that is what I, I am trying to achieve. Uh, and that's the starting point. And, and not to put unnecessary obstacles in your way, funding and equipment and facilities. And the last thing I'm trying to do as a leader is to change perception. When people hear the word gymnastics, they're thinking about autistic. They don't remember that we are eight disciplines, many of which require no facility and no equipment whatsoever. So part of my leadership is also changing the perceptions. Donnie, we're all sitting here nodding our head. I can see Henrik nodding our head. Um, I think sometimes we put up our own barriers 
definitely. We put up our own barriers because of our, even our perception or short-sightedness sometimes. Henrik, I saw you nodding. Your one tip to other federations or even to the leaders, the future leaders. Um, to become an effective leader is really important to develop a strong communication skills for me. This is a really important point. And be willing to learn and adapt constantly, you know? So being able to change and being able to understand other persons and understanding the new generations and at the same time, uh, the old generations and trying to mix all the experience for sure. Uh, all these points with a good and strong communication skills, um, it's easier to to put your country and, and the gymnastics in the way that everybody wanted. Thank you, everybody. I've had the most wonderful hour. Um, I've had an education and I think together we can be better. One of my slogans is together we can grow and we can conquer anything. And I think as um, the International Federation, as we come together better uh, further, we can really make sure gymnastics is a number one and it's the safest place to be in the world. So thank you for your time. I'm going to contact all of you because there's so many, much more I want to ask about what you're doing in your country. But you never know, we might have Series 3 coming your way sooner than later. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.